Hi, I want to show you a tip for making a reference for center on holes that are going to be welded up so that later on we can line up with that reference and we'll be in the original location for our holes to be bored. These holes were worn, uh, the customer wanted them uh, made it a tighter fit. They weren't worn very much, but he still wanted a better fit, so we welded them up. But before we did that, uh, according to whatever diameter we had, we made a plug. And we took our plug and we blued it up on the end and we scribed crosshair on there. So once the crosshair was on our plug, then we inserted it into the piece and we took our rule, lined it up with our crosshair, inscribed lines onto the piece beyond the area we're gonna be welding. We made sure we scri uh, scribed them. Nice good scratches in there so that they didn't get rubbed out or anything and we wouldn't lose those. So once those were scribed on our piece, then we made little discs that were close to those welded up holes and we kind of tapped them in place a little bit and put something on the back side to hold them. Then we took our, once we had our pieces in, we took our steel rule and off of those little plugs that were scribed, rather the plugs weren't scribed, the, the piece was scribed, we actually came across and scribed the plug for our crosshairs. And then now we had those crosshairs, we took our center punch and we punched the center mark where they intersected. So that gave us a reference for picking that up after the holes were welded. So you can see, we're going to go around the back here and show you some plugs that are in. And also we have a, a drill bit in there and we line up X and, um, and Z and we get our center. And now that that's done, we can just grind the tack welds for the plug bang it out of there, and then run whatever tool through we wanted to. In this case, we're running a couple of end mills, then later we'll put our boring head and finish the holes. And then we'll flip our piece around, and we'll run a, a long rod through with a dial indicator, and we will pick up on that hole on the other side. It will be on this side, the finished hole. And that way we'll be lined up with the opposite hole. And so we ran our indicator along the piece, to get it straight with the table axis. But I decided to take a half inch min, end mill and just swipe a nice light cut along there so that it, it's real uniform. Um, another thing to be careful of is when you have a piece that you're clamping down to the table, whether or not clamping might cause it to bend or twist. I mean, the piece might be twisted to begin with. In this case, we did have a little twist in the piece. So we put it up on, uh, four inch tall parallel blocks, but we also put our one, two, three blocks. So uh, it was just touching the four corners. And we put a little shim stock in on this front corner so that when we clamped it, it didn't twist the piece. Because when you release those clamps and that twist uh, comes back, well, your hole, you just line board, will twist out too. And so we wanna make sure that our holes, once line board, are gonna stay where they're supposed to be after we release our clamps. So that's a little little tip there. I hope you find it useful.